Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering .conf18. Brought to you by Splunk. We're back in Orlando, everybody, at splunk.conf18, hashtag SplunkConf18, I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We like to go out to the events, we want to extract the signal from the noise, we've been documenting the ascendancy of, of Splunk for the last seven years, how Splunk really starts in IT operations and security, and now we heard today Splunk has aspirations to go into the line of business, but speaking of security, Gary McCullough is here, he's a Senior Director of Cyber and Information Security at FINRA, and he's joined by Siddhartha Sid. Dadana, who's the Director of Information Security Engineering at FINRA. Gentlemen, welcome back to theCUBE, Gary, and Sid, first timer, yep. welcome on, on theCUBE. Thank you. So, I want to start with, with FINRA. Why don't you explain, I mean, I think many people know what FINRA is, but explain what you guys do and sort of the importance of your mission. Sure, it's uh, our main uh, aspiration is to protect investors. And we do that in two ways. We actually monitor the uh, brokers and dealers that, uh, that do trades for people. But more importantly, and what precipitated our move to the cloud was the enormous amount of data that we have to pull in daily. Every transaction on almost every U.S. stock market has to be surveilled to ensure that people are acting properly. And we do that uh, uh, at the petabyte scale. And doing that with your own hardware became untenable. And so the ability to have elastic uh, uh, processing in the cloud became very attractive. How much data are we talking about here? Can, is there any way you can sort of quantify that for <laughs> us or give us a mental picture? Yeah, we, so the example I use is uh, if you took every transaction uh, that Visa has on a normal day, every Facebook like, every Facebook update, and if you took every Twitter tweet, you added them all together, you multiplied it by 20, you would still not reach our peak on a peak day. Oh yeah, hence Splunk, and we'll talk about that, but, but Sid, and what's your role? You got to architect all this stuff, the data pipeline, what, what, do, you, what do you? So my role is basically to work with DevOps teams, application teams to basically integrate security in their, how, in their processes, how they roll out applications, how they look at data, how they use the same data that security uses for them to be able to leverage it for DevOps and other okay. performance. So your mission is to make sure security is not an afterthought, it's not a bolt-on, it's a fundamental part of the development process, so it's not thrown over the fence, hey, secure this application, it's built in, is that right? Yes. Okay, Gary, I wonder if you could talk about how security has changed over the last several years. You hear a lot that, well, all the spending historically has been on keeping the bad guys out the perimeter, as the perimeter disappears, uh, things change and the, the emphasis changes. Certainly data is a bigger factor, analytics have come into play. From your perspective, what, has, what is the big change or the big changes in security? So, it's an interesting question. So I've been through several paradigm changes and I don't think anyone has been as big as the move to the cloud. And the cloud offers so much uh, opportunity from a cost perspective, from a processing perspective, but it also brings with it certain security concerns. And we're able to use tools like Splunk to be able to do surveillance on our AWS environments in order to give us the confidence the, to be able to use those services up there. And so we now are actually looking at how we're going to secure individual AWS services before we use them. Rather than looking to bring stovepipe solutions in, we're looking for, to leverage leverage our AWS relationship to be able to uh, leverage what, they've, what they build out of the box. Yeah, people oftentimes, Stu, talk about cloud security like it's some binary thing. Oh, I don't want to go to the cloud because cloud is dangerous, or cloud security is better. It's not that simple, is it? I mean, maybe the infrastructure, we, in fact, we heard the CIA, Stu and I were in, in, in DC in December, we heard the CIO of the CIA say cloud on its, its worst day is better than my client server from a security perspective. But he's really talking about the infrastructure. There's so much more to security, Absol right? Absolutely, and so I agree that, uh, that the cloud gives the 
opportunity to be better than you are on-prem. I think the way FINRA has rolled out, we've shown that uh, we are more secure in the cloud than we have been on traditional data centers. And uh, it's because of our ability to actually monitor our whole AWS environment. Everything is API based. We know exactly what everybody's doing. There's no shadow IT anymore. And, uh, and those are all big positives. Yeah, I'm wondering how you, uh, what, what KPIs you look at when you look at your Splunk environment. What we hear from Splunk, you know, it's, it's scalability, cost, performance, and that, that management, the monitoring uh, of the environment. How are they doing? How does that make your job easier? So, I think we still look at the same KPIs which Splunk actually advertises all the time. Uh, but some of the reasons, like, uh, from our perspective, we kind of look at it in terms of how much value can we give it to not just one part, one part of the company, but how can we make it a much more enhanceable product for everyone in the organization. So the more we do that, I think that makes it a much better ROI for any, any organization to use a product like this one. You guys talk about this shift left movement. What, what is shift left and what's the relevance to security? Yeah, so shift left is a uh, concept where instead of looking at security as a bolt-on, or an add-on, or a separate entity, we're looking to leverage what are traditional DevOps tools, what are traditional SDLC uh, pipeline roles, and we're looking at how we integrate security into that. And we use Splunk uh, to be able to uh, integrate collection of data into our CDCI pipelines, and it's all hands off. So somebody hits a button to deploy a new VPC in AWS, automatically things are monitored and into our uh, enterprise search, uh, I'm sorry, enterprise security SIM, and automatically being monitored. There's no hands on, there's no hands on uh, that needs to be done. So on a scale of one to five, thinking of a maturity model in terms of, in a, in a DevOps context, five being you know, the gold standard and one being you're just getting started, where would you put FINRA on that spectrum? I mean, just subjectively. So, I'll never say that uh, we're a five because never I think done. there's always, yeah. you're never done and there's always room for improvement, yeah. but I think we're at, we're at least a strong four. Uh, we, uh, we've embraced those concepts and, uh, and we've, put them into, we've put them into action. And, and so, I, I thought so, and I want to ask you from a skill standpoint how you got there. So, you've been around a long time. You had a dev team and an ops team before the term DevOps even came around, right? And we talk about this a lot, Stu. What did you do with the ops guys and the dev guys? Is it ops dev or dev ops? Did you retrain them? Did you fire them all and hire new people? How did you go through that transition? Yeah, that's a fair thing. I went to my CISO, John Brady, a couple of years ago and I said I told him that we were going to need to get these new skill sets in and that I thought I had the right person in SID to be able to head that up. And we brought in some new talent, but we also retrained the existing talent because these were really bright people and they still had the security skills. And what SID's been able to do is to, is to embrace that and create a working relationship with the traditional DevOps teams so that we can integrate into their tools. So it does include a little bit work on even on our end to do where, where you kind of learn how the DevOps processes work. So you got to do it on your own to first figure out things. And then you, then you can actually relate to the problems which they would go through and then you work through problems with them. Rather than you designing up a solution and then just say, hey, go and implement it out. So I think that kind of relationship has helped us and in the long run we hope to do a bit more Better work. Yes, Sid, could you bring us in a little bit uh, when you look at your Splunk deployment? Uh, Finner's got a lot of applications. H how, how do you get all those various applications in there? Uh, you, you know, the Splunk talks about you can get access to your data your way. Do you find that to be the reality? Yes, to a certain extent. Uh, we ha so. Let's take a step back here. So our design is much more hybrid oriented. So we have we use Splunk Cloud, but that's primarily for our indexers. Whereas we are we host our own search clusters up there. Uh, our, all the data basically goes in from servers from 
AWS components from on-prem basically flows into uh, our Splunk cloud indexes and we use the role-based uh, access management to actually give everyone the access to whatever data they need to be looking at. All right, and they, they've made a number of enhancements from 7.2 updates to the cloud. Uh, Gary, Gar, is there anything that's jumped out that's going to architecturally help, help your team? So I think one of the interesting things is the, uh, is the new uh, data pipeline, and to be able to actually mangle that data before I get it into my Splunk indexers uh, is going to be really, really life-changing for us. Uh, one of the hard parts is that developers write code and they don't necessarily create logs that, uh, that are event-driven. They don't have date time stamps, they do dumps. So I'm going to be able to actually massage that before I get it, it hits the indexers, and it's going to speed up uh, our ability to be able to provide quick searches because the indexers won't be working on that uh, on those ma uh, mangling that data. And how big of a deal is it you, uh, for you? They announced uh, yesterday the ability to to, to scale storage and, and compute separately in a more granular fashion. Is that a big deal for you? So I actually, I remember speaking to Doug Merritt uh, probably f three years ago. You started this. <laughs> and, I, and I said, hey, Doug, what's it called? Uh, I said, I really think that that's the direction that you need to go. You're going to have to separate those two eventually because we're doing it at petabyte scale. We realized very early that that need to be done. And so it's really, really refreshing to see that because it's going to be transformative uh, to be able to do compute on demand after that. Because now we can start looking at API brokers and we can start looking at uh, containers and all those other things can be uh, integrated into Splunk. Love having customers on like you guys that are so knowledgeable. I have to ask, switch gears a little bit. I want to ask you about your security regime. We had a, a, a customer on yesterday, and, and it, it was the CISO who reported to him, who, he was the EVP, and he reported to the CIO. A lot of organizations say, you know what, we want the CISO to be separate from the CIO, because it's like the, you know, the fox in the hen house kind of thing, and we want that sort of a little bit of tension in there. How do you guys approach it? What's the regime you have for? That is a fair question, and I've heard that, uh, and from many uh, other CISOs that have that same sort of complaint. And I think it's really organization based. And I think, do you have the checks and balances in place? First of all, our CIO, uh, Steve Randage, is extremely, he cares a lot about security and he is very good at getting funding for us for initiatives uh, to help secure the environment. But more importantly, our board of directors bring up security at every board event. They care about it, they know about it, and that permeates through the organization. So there's checks and balances to make sure that, uh, that we have the right security in place, and it's a working relationship, not adversarial at all. So uh, having our CISO, John Brady, report to Steve Randich, the CIO, has not been a hindrance. And, and I think that's a, a change in the last several years, because that regime that I described, which was, which was, there was a sort of wave there where that became common, and I think you just hit on it. When security became a, a board level issue, and it, for every Fortune 1000, Global 2000 company, it's a board level issue, they talk about it every board meeting. When that occurred, I think there was an epiphany of, you know, we need the CIO to actually be on this, and you want the CIO to, to be responsible for that. And the change was, it used to be, hey, if, 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 if I fail, I get fired. And I think boards now realize that failure in security doesn't mean you got breached. Sure. You know, uh, breaches are going to happen. It's how you respond to them and you know, how you react to them that is becoming more important. So there's much more transparency around security in, in our view. I, I wonder if you agree with that. I think there's transparency and the other thing is, is that you have to put the decision making where it makes the most sense. Most of the security breaches that we're talking about are highly technical in nature, where a CIO is better able to evaluate uh, some of those decisions. Not all companies have a CEO that, ha that came from a technology uh, train in order to be able to make those decisions. So I think it makes more sense to have the CISO report to somebody with a uh, in the technology world. That's great, thank you for that. Now the other question I have for you is, is in terms of FINRA's experience with Splunk, did it start with, with SecOps in, in security or was it sort of IT operations? Or? It did, it started with security. Uh, we were 
disenfranchised with uh, traditional sims that were out there and we decided to go with Splunk and we made the decision to, that security was going to own it but we wanted it to be a corporate asset from day one. And we worked our tails off to integrate uh, through brown bags, through training, uh, to, so we permeated through the organization. And on every, any given week, we pull about 35 to 40% of all of technology is using Splunk at FINRA. So I'm curious as to, we heard some announcements today, I don't know if you saw them, about you know, Splunk Next, building on that, Splunk for the line of business, uh, the business flow, they did a nice demo there. Do you see, because security was sort of was the starting point and your mission was always to permeate the organization, do you see that continuing to other parts of the organization more aggressively now given this sort of democratization of data for the business lines? And will you guys be a part of that or directly? We hope so. We hope we, <laughs> we hope we are part of that change too. I mean, the more we can use the same data for even business users, that would help them. Mm -hmm. uh, that would relieve a lot of. And they've made this point um, again and again in the in the keynote too that the IT ops and sec ops are already burdened enough. So how do we make? Uh, life easy for business users to actually leverage the same data. So we hope to be able to put these tools up and see if, if we can make any difference to uh, business users. So you guys have put a lot of emphasis on, on integrating with uh, Splunk and AWS Cloud. You have a Absolutely. presentation later on today at, at Conf 18 uh, around the AWS Firehose. Absolutely. That was Splunk. What's that all about? What's the AWS Firehose? How are you integrating it? Why is it important? So it is streaming and uh, it allows me to get information from AWS that's typically in something called uh, CloudWatch logs that is really difficult to be able to talk to. And I want to get it into Splunk so that I can get more value from it. And what I'm able to do is put something called a subscription filter on it and flow that data directly into Splunk. So Splunk worked with AWS to create this integration between the two tools, and we think we've taken it to a high level. We uh, we're, we've, we're use it for Lambda uh, to grab those logs, we use it for VPC flow logs, we're using it for, as SaaS providers, provide APIs into their data, we're, we use it for that, and finally, we're, uh, we're going to be doing database activity monitoring, all leveraging this same uh, technology. Love it, I mean, you guys are you know, on the forefront of cloud and Splunk integration, cloud adoption, DevOps. You guys have always been great about sharing your knowledge you know, with others and really appreciate you guys coming on theCUBE, thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there everybody. Stu and I will be back. You're watching theCUBE from Conf18, Splunk's big user conference. We'll be right back.